Hey guys, back at Kentucky Ranch Time, back with another episode of our 44 Mag Ballistic Gel Block Test Series. And this episode, we're looking at the Hornady 225 grain FTX bullet. Now, this is a popular pistol and rifle uh, bullet, and especially lever action rifles because of this large polymer tip that's safe for, for magazine tube loading uh, in lever action rifles. So let's turn around here and take a look at the loading, and then we'll go out to the range and we'll see how these things do. All right, so here's a quick look at this loading. CCI 350 large rifle magnum primers, Hodgson little gun powder, and of course the Hornady FTX bullet. And there's a good look at the part numbers and stuff on that. And here is a look at this loaded round. Now, one little caveat that I want to throw in here is I did not trim down my 44 mag brass. Uh, these are loaded short in some 44 special brass. That's why they're not loaded up to the cantilever. And, uh, that saves me from having to cut down and, and waste some perfectly good 44 mag brass to accommodate this bullet. And uh, I've been running these like this for, for quite a while and never had any issues out of them. So. so, all right, let's head on out to the range and see how these things do in the gel block. And we'll be back here in just a few minutes to, uh, to take a look at the results. All right, guys, next up we've got the... Uh, the Hornady 225 grain FTX bullet. And uh, so this is a little bit different. I, I had this loaded to 44 mag lengths, but in lieu of trimming down and ruining some of my cases uh, as Hornady requires for this bullet, I have loaded these in 44 special brass. And if you notice, uh, they're not hardly seated down to the cantilever like they do with this is 44 mag brass. But this is my solution to not having to ruin some of my good Starline brass uh, to accommodate uh, Hornady's requirement for this round. So here we go with the rifle. All right, we got a velocity of 1729.2. And pretty sure we got the catch. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, our wind track for this one starts right here. And uh, pretty much immediate expansion on this thing, literally by a half inch, we're showing expansion on this. Now we've got the polymer tip laying out here at about three and a half inches. Lots of copper and lead fragments from uh, from about two and a half up to about five and a half inches. And then we go into straight line penetration. We've got some more copper jacket down here at about 15 inches. And final resting depth looks like we went out to about 25 and a quarter inches before it sucked back a little bit. And we do have some really nice uh, expansion mushrooming on this bullet. So uh, we'll get this dug out and uh, take a better look at it back in the shop. All right, next up is the Ruger Super Red Hawk. All right, guys, we're track for the Super Red Hawk starting right here and pretty much immediate expansion again. Uh, we've got the polymer tip laying out here at about three and a quarter inches. Uh, first lead fragment, copper fragment actually at nine inches, and then several lead fragments between 12 and 15 inches. And more lead fragments at about 22 and a half, and more fragments at 24 and a half. And final resting spot of this bullet is down here at about 26 and a half inches. And looks like we actually sucked out just a little bit farther and the gel block sucked it back in. So uh, let's call this 26 and a half. And there actually is a fairly large lead fragment down here at about 27 and a half inches. So, all right guys, Ruger Super Red Hawk, the uh, Taurus four inch tracker is going next. All right guys, Taurus four inch tracker. This is the, the M44 version of the tracker. And uh, this does have the ported barrel. Now, just a note, there is actually only three inches of threaded barrel on this. The, the last inch of this is, uh, is nothing but uh, an open chamber for the porting. And uh, so, you know, it says four inch barrel and they're, in, they're including this, uh, 
unrifled, unbarreled really portion of, uh, of comp at the end of this. So, all right, here we go. We did not get a velocity on that. Pretty sure we got the catch though, so let's try one of these in the backstop. Velocity of 1269.3. All right, velocity of 1269.3. And let's go check out the catch. All right, again, immediate expansion. We've got our polymer tip laying out here two and a half inches this time. Uh, not a lot of lead fragments this time like we saw with the other two uh, calibers. There's a small fragment at 15. Uh, some more fragments out here at 17. And then final resting spot down here at 25 and a half inches. So total penetration of 25 and a half inches. And looks like we got good mushrooming on the nose of this bullet, but uh, not near as much as we had with the, uh, with the longer barrels. So that's to be expected. All right, let's go see what this two and three quarter inch uh, Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum will do. All right, guys, next up is the uh, Smith & Wesson two and three quarter inch Combat Magnum and the Hornady 225 grain FTX bullet. Velocity of 1195.9 feet per second. And let's go check out this catch. All right, guys, so here's our wing track for this one. Uh, ballistic tip at an inch and a half. Uh, we have some nice, nice large fragments out here at about nine and a half inches and some copper shards. Uh, at 11 and a half and then we go into straight line penetration all the way down to final resting spot of 31 inches and it looks like we actually sucked out to 32 inches before the, the gel block sucked this thing back in a little bit so here's a look at the expansion on this bullet uh, nice looking bullet for a two and three quarter inch uh, barreled revolver So, all right, back in the shop and we got these things dug out and got some pretty outstanding uh, performance out of all four of these bullets that we shot. Uh, this is the, the 20 inch, nine and a half inch Super Red Hawk, the four inch Taurus Tracker, two and three quarter inch uh, Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum, and the 20 inch is the Rossi R92 lever action rifle. And uh, as you can tell, We've lost some pedals on all these, but they all did open up and perform very well from the fastest velocity right down to the slowest one. All right, guys, we're at the FTX, and, and this is a workhorse. I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put it out there. So the rifle was at 1729 with 25 and a quarter inches penetration. The two and three quarter inch combat magnum was at 1195.9, so 1196 feet per second with 31 inches of penetration. And we got good expansion with all these. Uh, so 25 and a quarter to 31 inches of expansion, that was the range. And all of them mushroomed up really good. And we're everywhere from 0 0.606 up to 0 0.642. So across roughly 500 foot of velocity difference, uh, we still had really good expansion and we still had similar penetration. So even with the big, big variance in the velocities between the pistol, the 20 inch rifle and the two and three quarter inch pistol, we still got the good expansion and we still got really consistent penetration across the board. So, all right guys, Hornady FTX, let's hear it. Uh, questions, leave in comments. 
and uh, love to hear any feedback you guys have. All right, got. guys, if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. And feel free to scroll down here. There should be a little oval button that says share. If you'll push that button and then come down and hit copy. Uh, and then go somewhere on, you know, in a text or in your other social media accounts and paste that link in there. You can share this video with all your friends. And uh, anyway, guys, I really do appreciate you guys watching. And Matt from Kentucky Range Time, we'll catch you on the next one.